Hello, welcome to Charity Ministries. Our desire is that your life would be blessed and changed by this message. This message is not copyrighted and is not to be bought or sold. You are welcome to make copies for your friends and neighbors. If you would like additional messages, please go to our website for a complete listing at www.charityministries.org. If you would like a catalog of other sermons, please call 1-800-227-7902 or write to Charity Ministries, 400 West Main Street, Suite 1, Ephrata, Pennsylvania, 17522. These messages are offered to all without charge by the free will offerings of God's people. A special thank you to all who support this ministry. Greetings this morning. In the worthy name of Jesus, we welcome each one of you. We're glad you're here with us. I can say with Brother Emmanuel that it has sure been a rich experience to have you brothers and sisters with us for a few Lord's Days together and in our homes for fellowship and I can um, hardly fathom that we're here. I have to um, confess there are mixed emotions in my heart. I, I reminisced a little this morning and with great fondness and appreciation for my brothers. I remember when I first came to Charity Christian Fellowship, about ten families we were, and we were desperately on our faces before God. How many of you remember those prayer meetings over in the old New Holland Mennonite Church basement? I see two or three hands, yes. Four hands and you know we were we were just a little band and lowly and we knew it and like David's men in the cave there you know days of knitting our hearts together seeking the face of God and crying out O oh Lord Lord Jesus, build your church. A New Testament church. Oh, Lord Jesus, is it not time for you to work? Make bare thy holy arm. Lord, lift us up out of our lethargy, our lukewarmness, our religiosity. Oh, God, we need revival. 1980. 687. Oh, yes, I thought of how the Lord in His mercy and graciousness visited us. We began a revival meeting, preaching every night. Brother Wayne Weaver from Ohio came and we said we're going to have a week of meetings and it turned into two and then it turned to three. That's when uh, Brother Emmanuel got saved, right? That's when uh, Amy Fisher, that's when Daniel Fisher, that's when God began to, by His Spirit, breathe upon us. Isn't it time, Lord, for you to work? In our day, 2010, oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, I have found Him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longing. Through His blood I now am saved. But, oh, Lord, is it not time for You to work? Is it not time for Thy people to humble themselves and to earnestly seek Your face, Lord. Yes, God has a promise. 
if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and will repent and turn to the Lord with all their heart, ah, then God says, I will hear their cry. I will answer their prayer. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Does our land need healing? Does the Charity Christian Fellowship movement, if I may call it that, though just a small speck we are, need a fresh touch from God? I do. Oh Lord, I'm not satisfied where I'm at. You know, here this morning, We are a little speck on the globe. I may even say, according to Scripture, we're a small portion of the body of Christ. The Scriptures declare that in heaven there was a scene of a great multitude which no man could number, and of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Hallelujah! The kingdom of God is much bigger than Charity Christian Fellowship. It's of all kindreds, it's of all tongues, and of all nations, and of all peoples. And all enter into the kingdom by Jesus Christ. He is the door. If any man will come in, he must enter in through the door of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm so glad this morning that the kingdom of God is much bigger than just my own little world. But I'm also so blessed this morning that Jesus said, Fear not, little flock, little band and lowly, for it is the Father's good pleasure to what? To give unto you the kingdom. So, brothers and sisters, this morning... Let us walk humbly with our God. And let us behave ourselves wisely in the house of God and in the larger kingdom of God. We are not exclusively holding a right to our Heavenly Father and to the kingdom of God. I am very blessed for what God has put in the hearts of the elders who... uh, cried out to the Lord for New Testament Christianity back in 1981 or 2. Which one was it? 82. I have been greatly blessed and have been a recipient of others' prayers and labors. Amen? I owe so much, first of all, to my Lord Jesus Christ and secondly, to my brother Denny and to my brother Mose who together had a vision burning in their hearts. And God brought these two men together from opposite poles. I know when I first heard about it, somebody described it to me this way. <clears throat> There's an ex-hippie and an ex-Amish starting a church. Now, what do you think of that? <laughs> They're having special meetings over at Hinkletown Mennonite School. Should we go? Well, I was a young married man, my family just beginning. I didn't think it sounded too appealing. And I didn't go, but I sometimes wonder what would have happened if I'd have went. Because at that time there was a desire burning in my heart for something more than I was experiencing. Are you desiring and longing for something more than you presently have? 
Let's not settle down on our knees and say, I have arrived. I am now at Charity Christian Fellowship. There is so much more that our Heavenly Father has in store for those who love Him, for those who will give their hearts and lives to Him, for those who will lay down on the altar of sacrifice and say, I'm the clay, you're the Master. Mold me and shape me after Thy will. It's wonderful to be a part of the family of God. Well, the years ticked by and in my own personal testimony, I was down in Huttonsville, West Virginia. There I met some brethren who were modestly clothed. They were Serious about serving God? And you know, at first I thought, Lord, just more religious men with their hook and eye coats and their dark clothing. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a long weekend. But then, as we were there in that prison, and it was time for the service to begin... I heard a sound of music in my ear. It was these brethren on their knees before God, praying, crying out to the Lord that God in His mercy would visit us in this prison setting and that the love of Jesus would be shed abroad in the hearts of these hardened sinners, these criminals, that they might experience the forgiveness of God. The love of Jesus. Oh, my heart thrilled. I was able to kneel down there beside them. And that was a short weekend. We had prayer meetings together. We could hardly find time to sleep. We were so excited. And then they said to me, these men were from Ohio, and they said to me, well, where are you from? And I told them, they said, well, haven't you ever visited Charity Christian Fellowship? I think you would find some like-minded brethren. I said, you mean the Hippie and Amish Church? (laughs) They said, you need to go. (laughs) So I remember, as soon as I got home, I called Brother Mose on the phone and spoke with him. And immediately... There was a joy leapt up in my heart. I said to Janice, we're going to charity and visit. And there we found a hunger and a thirst for God that we could relate and we could tune our hearts in. Is it not time for God to work. When we were poor and needy and were crying out to God, He worked marvelously and wonderfully. Have we perhaps gotten a little too big for our own good in our own estimation? And the boy's rolling and the church is big and We don't quite need God as desperately now as we did then. Oh Lord, open our eyes. Because we need God more desperately today than we did then, if I may say so. Lord, open my eyes. I've really grown to appreciate and love my dear brothers. I owe so much to Brother Denny and Brother Mose. And I want to walk with my brothers in robes of white on the streets of gold with my dear Jesus. So brothers, the last chapter hasn't been written yet. Let us earnestly seek the Lord 
that Christ Jesus will build His church. That revival fires will burn once again. Thank You, Lord. The word that came to me this morning was, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountains. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and His arm shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him and His work before Him. He shall feed His flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with His arm and carry them in His bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem. And cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and her iniquity is pardoned. So I pondered what the Lord would have for us. My heart was drawn to First Chronicles 29. So if you will turn there with me. First Chronicles And we want to draw some examples from the Old Testament in the forming and in the establishing of a new fellowship, as was mentioned already here today. When we think of The church at large, scattered across the globes, many kindreds, tribes, tongues, and nations. But then here we are, and we desire to establish a fellowship. in righteousness, in holiness, in meekness, turning our hearts toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, build your church. Before we begin reading in 1 Chronicles 29, I'll just read a few verses from Isaiah 66. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath my hand made, and those things have been, saith the Lord. Where is the place of God's rest? Where is the house that God dwells, he tells us. He says, To this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. To this man will I look, to the man that is poor. Woe to the rich, He sendeth the rich away empty. Ah, but blessed are the poor. And we're not talking about how much money you have, although that may hinder you adversely, but we're talking about a posture of heart. To this man will I look, to him that is poor, to him that is of a contrite spirit, and that trembleth at my word. So here this morning, as we look at the establishing of a new church, 
A new fellowship? Where do we turn to? But to the Word. The Word of God. The quick, powerful, sharp Word of the Lord. Let's go to First Chronicles 29. And we'll begin in verse 1. Furthermore, David, the king, said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Let's just pause for a moment. The work is great. The palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. I want to exhort us this morning, for us at charity, and for you brothers and sisters, if our end goal is that this church body is for us, It's for me. It's to fulfill my needs. It's to meet my needs. It's so we can just have a nice, cozy little fellowship. And we get all focused in on each other. And our world becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller smaller till it's just us. And we have lost the vision of wherefore God has saved us and called us. This house is not for man, but for the Lord God. We are saved not only to escape the wrath of Almighty God, but we are saved for His glory and for His honor, and for His purposes. We are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus, and we are not our own. What happens when a man gets gloriously, truly saved? He becomes an evangelist, even before he knows it's in the Bible. Amen? You see... The palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. And if you have, if you and I, it's for me too, if we all together have our focus on the high and holy calling of God in Christ Jesus and the purposes of God, then the church will prosper because it will be alive. And it will be flowing out. And we won't be like a stagnant pond where we just sit there and there's no fresh water flowing in because we don't have any needs, because we're not giving out, and there's no water flowing out because we're just sitting there and happy and contented. God said to Israel, Woe to you that sit on your lees and are at ease in Zion. Oh, I need a deeper vision of that myself. I like a comfortable life. I, I admit it. I, I cringe at times when I sense the Lord prompting me and I, it, it pushes me out of my comfort zone. So I just want to just sort of stay there. Anybody identify with that? Oh, but the Lord God, with His grace, with His power, with His anointing, He wants us to shine, beautify the temple of the Lord, the house of the Lord. All right, let's continue on here. Brother Emmanuel, I don't know what you realize what you've done, but I could preach a long time on this subject. But we, we, are, we want to be mindful. We want the Lord to speak and have His way. Verse 2, 
Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things to be made of gold and the silver for the things of silver and the brass for the things of brass the iron for the things of iron and the wood for the things of wood onyx stones and stones to be set glistering stones and of divers colors and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Oh, praise God! What all beautiful illustrations and applications can be drawn out of that? The first one that I see is, I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. And brothers and sisters this morning, may I exhort us to wholeheartedly, with all of our might, prepare to serve God, to build His house, to make His name glorious. This speaks of some thought. This speaks of some planning. You don't just one day decide to build. There's planning. First it's a dream and a vision in the mind and heart. And then it goes into the planning stage. And then it goes into the preparation stage. Amen? You start preparing, you start gathering materials. Oh, brother, sister, let us prepare our hearts with all of our might. You know, is there anything that is almost more nauseating than a worker who is just half-hearted and lethargic? doesn't prepare, doesn't get his things in order. He knows what he's supposed to do in his job, but he just keeps neglecting and being slothful and half-hearted. You don't like that, do you? I don't believe we should offer a half-heartedness to the Lord, but rather a prepared heart He says, I have prepared with all my might. Oh, I think of the testimony of Jesus. He said he's beside himself. Why? Because he was so zealous for the kingdom of God. He was so zealous for his Father's testimony, for the glory of the Lord. And it was said of him, the zeal of thine house. Thine house, it has eaten me up. It's my, it's my constraining. It's my driving. Not in a bad way, but, but in a good way. I'm consumed with your house, Lord. As we sung that hymn this morning, for Christ and the church. I like that. For Christ and the church. Let us willing offerings make. Let us willingly sacrifice. A prepared heart. Prepared with all my might. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know, when you have a vision and a dream to build that house, there are some other things take lesser priority. Right? Maybe we have some other things that need to take lesser priority. Maybe we need a higher vision burning in our hearts for the kingdom of Christ and His church. And then that will help us to lay aside lesser things. Rise up, O men of God, be done with lesser things. 
The church for you doth wait. Well, I like all those different stones. The gold, the silver, the iron, the wood. When you look at all those different stones, it reminds me of the diversity in the body of Christ. I am so glad not everybody's like me. I am so glad there's diversity. I love and appreciate the gift of my brother Emmanuel. The talents, the gifts that God has given him. My brother Mel, and then my brother Paul, and my brother Denny. You know, we're all unique. And I could go on and keep naming brethren and sisters. I love the diversity. You know, some, some they are bright and glistening and and, uh, oh, I love their, their expressive character and nature and their bubbling joy and they glisten. Doesn't he say that here? Glistening. Glistering stones. You know, it's beautiful when it's not mixed with pride. When it's pure. It's sanctified. And it's beautiful to behold. Don't you love to just be around people that are just full of zeal and, uh, and joy and full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glistening stones, diverse colors. Oh, I like that. You know, our God is a creative God. Just look at creation. Just look at nature. I mean, I might have stopped with Eight colors of hues for flowers. How many colors are there? Does anybody know? Thousands, right? The shades. And you know, God made us. When He ascended on high, He led captivity captive, and He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men. Are all apostles? Are all pastors, are all teachers, are all, do all speak with tongues? No, there's a diversity of gifts. And when those colors are all blended together, it makes a complete wholeness that is beautiful to behold. But if I start saying, I don't like that glistening color, I think you're proud. And I shut myself off from that one. Oh, that color's too bright. No, can't have anything to do with that one. Oh, this color's too dark. You know who we're hurting? We're hurting ourselves. We're missing out on so much that God has designed that we should be partakers in. I mean, where's the hearing if we cut off all the ears? Where's the smelling if we get rid of all the noses? I mean, we around here, we believe in this gift. And we extol and magnify that one. At the expense of others. Lord, have mercy upon us. We do not write. We go lame. You know, and halt because we didn't think we needed that leg. Glistening colors, divers colors, all manner of precious stones. See, they're all precious. Ah, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black and white. They are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I'm so glad I'm a child of the King. And everyone is precious in His sight. Every stone is precious. Is of great value. Everyone is needed if the temple is going to be complete. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
Verse 3, moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of mine own proper good gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I have set my affection to the house of my God. Other affections, other lesser things are laid aside. I have set my affection to the house of my God. Oh, that's beautiful. I trust this morning that you love Christ and His church. You love the house of God and what it represents. Oh, I love to meet with my brothers and my sisters. Oh, I love to share my heart with my brother. Oh, I love to meet with my brothers in the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Yes, my affection. You know, that just speaks not just out of duty. You know, some people go to church because they have to. Some people go to church because what would others think if I didn't? Some people go to church out of just simply a a duty, a social status thing. But others go to church to inquire of the Lord. And they know God is in my brother. The Lord dwells in every member of the body. I'm going to inquire of the Lord today this way and I'm going to inquire of the Lord today this way. Oh, the exhorting of one another, the encouraging of one another, maybe even reproof. It's a kindness to me if my brother should smite me. My brother that loves me. And has my best interest in mind. I can share my burden with my brother. And he shall pray with me. And pray for me. That sin that is a problem in my life. That is besetting me. He shall help me. We shall pray together. We will confess our faults one to another. And pray one for another. And we're looking to the Lord for healing. That which is lame. Let it be healed. Not just keep limping. You know. And we bear one another's burdens. And oh, how beautiful and how swiftly the time flies. When there's love in the church. And we share together and bear one another's burdens. And we affectionately are desirous one of another. Isn't that what Paul said? He said it to the Thessalonians. Yes, he said, he said, uh, Let's see if I have that here. Yes, I think I do. First Thessalonians. Paul said, We didn't seek glory of men, nor of you, yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherished of her children, and so being affectionately desirous of you. Hallelujah! So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, not just preach a sermon, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. Oh, brethren and sisters, when we have high esteem and love one for another, and we count our brother, our sister dear, And then it's not just a duty, 
but it's an affectionate desire and we, we, we love each other and there's love and there's that affectionate desire being desirous one of another. And then we impart unto one another. We invest in one another's lives, not the gospel of God only. It's not enough just to have them receive the gospel and be saved, but we want to see our brother, our sister grow in Christ and, and be uh, edified and nourished up and come unto a mature man in Christ and and we recognize we are members one of another in the body and, and we, we share together. Oh, it's beautiful. It's lovely. How much am I willing to impart? Good question. Yes, I prepared my heart with all my might. I prepared for the building of the house with all my might. And now Paul says, being affectionate desires of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls. You know, when we think of our own soul, we think of who I really am, right? My, my affection and emotion, my, my being, who I am in Christ, and we are willing to impart and open up a window into our hearts and not just be superficial, over the top, Right? But, but we get down into real brotherhood where Aaron sharpeneth Aaron. Well, I trust, brothers, we have an affection. A sanctified affection toward our brothers and sisters Amen. that desires and believes to see the best. And we're willing to impart something lay some other things aside so that we can have fellowship. Yes, he says, I gave over and above. You know, I was planning, I was dreaming, I was laying up in store and preparing. But I have of my own proper good, that which rightfully is mine, gold, silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above which I have prepared for the holy house. Yes, sacrificial giving, sacrificial living for Christ and the church, for my brother, my sister. Well, as we read on here and we look at the preparing and the uh, numbers here, it's, it's really amazing. Verse 4, 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the house with all the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of the artisans. And let's just stop there for a moment. I did try to find that. I wonder if I have that here, what that translates into. You know, I don't believe I have that. Is anybody quick with the measuring conversions? How, how many tons? 112 tons of gold. 112 tons of gold. And 262, of and 262 tons of silver. We are talking... Numbers that just boggle my mind. I, I can't. What is the price of gold per ounce today? Does anybody know? Close. $1,100 an ounce and there's 16 ounces in a pound. And let's see. 3.6 million ounces. Mm-hmm. You know, what we can learn from this is these people were serious about the glory of God. And in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, 
the building of the temple was to be magnificent because it, it displayed the glory and the blessing of God upon His people. Now what if the temple of Baal would have more gold and more silver? Absolutely not. The people of God put their hearts to the work and prepared themselves and they gave not only what they had prepared and laid up, but they gave sacrificially. Am I willing to do the same? And then, verse 5, Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? He asks the question. You know, we have prepared, we have the gold, we have the silver. Now, who is willing to consecrate himself? Who is willing to consecrate himself to the service this day unto the Lord? And we look at that gold and that silver and we say, that is just astronomical. But when we look at the gold and the riches and the blessing that Christ Jesus has purchased on Calvary's cross for us that makes this gold look like blacktop. Oh, hallelujah! He has prepared for His people a complete salvation. A mighty deliverance and then a full equipping. Amen. Oh, I, I walk around so in such poverty because I will not lay hold on the promises of God seated in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. Oh, that my eyes would be enlightened. Oh, that our eyes would be enlightened to know what is the hope of His calling, the fellowship of His suffering. That was one of Paul's burdens for the churches. Oh, that you would know what you've been saved to. Not just from, but what you've been saved unto and whereunto you have been called. Who then is willing? Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the service of the Lord? Hallelujah. Who is willing? I believe you're willing. I believe that's why you're here this morning. And I believe that the work that God has begun and that He's doing, He is able to perform it. He's able to complete it. He's able to bring it to full bloom. If we will stay at that place of consecration. If we will stay at that place of surrenderedness, as our brother Ed was talking about. If we will stay at that place of yieldedness. An entire consecration. Well, they were ready. <clears throat> you look down the list. Then the chief of the fathers... The princes of the tribes, the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds, the rulers of the king, they all offered willingly glory. They offered willingly and they gave for the service of the house of God. And again, it numbers off astronomical amounts. Let's look at this willingness. If we drop down to verse 9, they offered willingly because with a perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord and David, the king also. They offered willingly. 
with a perfect heart. You know, God loveth a cheerful giver. But if we are grudging and we're sort of holding on and we just do our duty, there isn't really much reward in that, is there? But when we offer willingly with a perfect heart, oh, the joy to the one who's offering it willingly and is giving it, but also to the rest. Look what he says. He says, the people rejoiced for they offered willingly with a perfect heart. It brings rejoicing and joy. When there's a willing offering. But if we're all just going around through life doing our duty, it can become pretty tiring and burdensome, doesn't it? But if we can offer it willingly, with joy and a perfect heart, that brings blessing and grace upon the one who is giving and the ones who are receiving A willing offering with a perfect heart. And then it results in praise to God. Oh, I love it. It results in praise to God and in worship to the Lord. Verse 10, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Hallelujah! Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, And in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and we praise thy glorious name. Oh, what a blessing. What a joy. When the people of God are filled with the spirit of giving. May I call it that? When the people of God have a heart to give, when the people of God are giving willing offerings, and I'm not talking finances, it may be finances, but I'm talking about investing our own lives and soul into the church of Jesus Christ and into Christ Himself. Yes, willing offerings. Oh, it's such a joy to be amongst the people of God where there is exuberant, extravagant surrender to Jesus Christ and giving up and yieldedness to Christ and blessing one another in Christ Jesus. Thine is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. We recognize that Jesus Christ, He is exalted, head above all. Brothers and sisters, that is so vital. We have a king. His name is Jesus. He is exalted head above all. He will not give His glory to another. Hallelujah! Let us give Him the glory and the praise due unto His name. Let us willing offerings make. It's how one hymn writer wrote it there. Yes. Holding fast the head, the head above all. I like verse 14 we see here. He says, But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? You know, how is it? How is it that we, redeemed sinners, can offer so willingly? It's because we have been recipients of the gifts and the graces of our benevolent God. Oh, I just can't get over that. It's something the Lord's been just laying on my heart these days. I am a recipient 
of the mercies and the grace of a benevolent Heavenly Father every moment of my life. He says, How can this be that we should offer so willingly? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. It all belongs to the Lord, but we've given it back to God, because God has given it to us. We recognize that God is the owner. He owns not only us, but all that we are. I am what I am by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have nothing to glory in. I have nothing to boast in save the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There you see humility. You know, just a humble servant. Who am I? You know, I'm nobody great. I'm nobody special. But it's because of God's mercies. It's because of God's benevolence. It's because of God's goodness. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variable or shadow of turning. God is so good. Amen. God is good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Well, I am thine, O Lord. I am thine. All our days on earth are as a shadow. Verse 16, O Lord, God, all this store we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name. All this cometh of thine hand, and all is thy own. You know, when we've given, and we've served, and we've labored, and we've loved, and we've poured out, we are but unworthy servants. Amen? Isn't that what Jesus taught us? You know? You serve, you give of all that the good hand of the Lord has given to us. And when it's all done, all the glory is thine, Lord. Hallelujah. And we are just unworthy servants. It all cometh of thy hand. And then verse 17, I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. Oh, thank the Lord. You know, when it comes out of a pure heart, out of an upright heart, it's beautiful to see the gifts exercising and flowing and working in the body. I think I should probably close very shortly. But let us think of what Jesus taught concerning the talents. Concerning the gifts that God gives. To every man is given by the measure of the grace of God a bestowment. If you're a child of God here today and you're born again of the Spirit of Christ, God has given unto you of His Spirit, you are born of the Spirit, God has given unto you a treasure in that earthen vessel that the glory should be to God and not to us. But He's given you a treasure. He's given you a talent. He's given you a deposit. And He's coming again and He's going to to, uh, expect an answer concerning the deposit He's given. He's as a man going on a far journey and letting the vineyard unto the husbandmen. And when he comes back, he's expecting to receive of the fruit. So my brother, my sister, let us not bury our talent. Let us not bury those giftings and callings that God has put in your heart. Because someday the Lord of the Master is going to come back and he's going to receive the uh, the the... Uh, the um, multiplying... Now, what's another word for it? 
The increase. Thank you, brother. He's going to receive of the increase. And it is almost alarming to read what he says to the one who buried it or hid it in a napkin and had no increase. What does he say? He says, Thou wicked and slothful servant. So this morning, my dear brother, my dear sister, God has bestowed by His Spirit and by His benevolence and goodness into us a talent, two talents, three, four, five talents. And what are we doing with it? When He comes, He is desiring to see fruit and an increase. And so to the shy today, to the ones not outgoing today, who say, I'm not of that glistering kind of stone, I'm just the one who sits in the back, I have nothing to offer, not so. He says, the more common members in the body, those that are less honorable are the more needful. Doesn't he say that? You know, the ear, the eye, the hand, the things that are out there to be seen and you can see what's happening. But you know what? If the, if the organs on the inside of my body would decide to quit and say, I never get any recognition, never, never thanks me, I'm just a liver and I quit, I'll be dead in short order. And so it be in the body of Christ. You think your gift isn't much value? I can't preach. I can't sing very well. I'm shy. But you know what? There's an answer from the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who transforms lives. The one who made your tongue. The one who saved you and bought you with His own precious blood. And He is able to take you from a shy, backward person and totally change your life. But you know what it takes? Back to Ed Hansen's message. Full surrender. Full yieldedness to the Master. I was so shy. I was so backward. I was so scared of people. If I had to talk to more than three I sometimes would choke up and I just was literally terrified. And that is not an exaggeration. My wife could tell you, I mean, I became so ingrown. I became so fearful. I didn't want to go visit anybody. I just wanted to stay at home. I started sitting in the corner sometimes crying. I was so afraid. But hallelujah, God is no respecter of persons. I think He changed me. I know He did. And I know it was Him. It was not the work of a man. It was no work of some medication from the doctor, though I tried it. But it was the blessed touch of my Lord Jesus Christ in His mercy, redeeming me, visiting this poor soul as I cried out to God in desperation. Lord, change me if you can. My faith wasn't strong. But the Lord always said, surrender. Surrender. These are tied together, you see. But I'm shy. I'm backwards. Just let me sit in the corner. But I saw other people who had living water gushing out of them like a river, like Jesus said. And I wanted it because I was not satisfied where I was at in my Christian life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's a miracle-working God. Fully surrendered Lord. Well, 
let us willing offerings make. Let us wholly be consecrated to the Lord. Let us not hold anything back. He that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. Ah, but he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So bountifully. Words of encouragement. So bountifully. Investing your life into other people's lives. Isn't that what Jesus did? He invested his life into other people's lives. He saved others. Oh Lord, I need to be less self-centered and more Christ-centered and focused on others. I trust that the Lord God who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. Press on, my brother, sister. There be many foes, there be many dangers and toils and snares along the way, but Jesus Christ is faithful by whom ye were called. Trust Him and rest in Him and love Him with all your heart. First commandment is this, to love the Lord God with all your heart. Second is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. They're all fulfilled right in there. So I commend you to God and to His grace and trust the Lord that He shall, in His goodness, build His church. Let's kneel together in prayer if you can. Oh, Father in heaven, Lord, is it not time for you to work? But, oh, Lord, at the same time, maybe you're saying, is it not time for my people, which are called by my name, to surrender themselves, to give up a whole offering, to consecrate themselves to the Lord, for the service of the Lord, for the majesty and glory of Jesus Christ. Father, I do pray that you will bless this congregation. Lord, if anything I've said has come across as scolding, I didn't mean it that way. Lord, please forgive. Father, I pray that you would encourage our hearts. Father, that we would be uh, encouraged and we would be motivated by your Spirit, Lord. Father, to full surrender, full consecration, full commitment, Lord, to make your temple beautiful for we are the temple of the living God oh Lord it's not that uh, that uh, temple that is adorned with gold and silver but it's brothers and sisters in Christ as it says there in Ephesians for a habitation of God through the spirit oh thank you Lord Father I pray that we would not sell ourselves out short Lord but God that we would totally Oh, Lord, be totally given to you and our affection and our hearts, adoration and preparation and all of our faculties be given to Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless, bless, Father, the establishment of this congregation, Lord. Oh, God, we ask you to have your way. Lord, God, that... Jesus Christ will be magnified and extolled and exalted in our lives. We love you and thank you and praise you for loving us, Lord. We are grateful, humble recipients of your goodness, of your love, and of your provision. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Turn the time over to Brother Emmanuel to share as he sees fit. Thank you. I thank God for his word this morning. Very fitting to our hearts. Such a time as this. Thank you, Brother Aaron. Such a timely message. Uh, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for ministering to our hearts through this your word. I just say amen to it. 
and uh, also with many mixed feelings, but also with joy. I noticed that there's a lot of joy in this chapter here, a lot of blessing, a lot of praising God, and uh, I'm trembling, I'm trembling this morning, so I think of the responsibility and the magnitude of something like this, yet we, wanna, we want to be faithful as the Lord leads us and guides us in these things. As Aaron was preaching through this chapter here, so appreciated it, just uh, many things came to my mind, and uh, I think what we'll do next is that we will have a special time of blessing, uh, commissioning the, the new church here, and... Uh, I trust God to guide us through that. And so as Aaron was preaching, some things came to my mind, and I'm going to try to walk that out by God's grace. So, what I would like to do is to, this verse here, where in verse 6, where it talks about, then the chief. Of course, the verse before that is, who then is willing to consecrate? His service this day unto the Lord. And that's the question for this new congregation. Who then is willing? And uh, there seems to be an order there of a structure in verse 6. And I would like to just lay that out here in a very simple, clear form. Just to give us a clear understanding. Uh, These brothers have asked us if we would help them uh, start a church. And we have agreed to that. And so I would like if the elders from charity could come up this time. And uh, we want to give a blessing. So if you elders could come up and our deacons. You would come up here. Up here beside the podium. There's a God has order in his kingdom. If you just come on up here to my right here, brothers. And like to have John, Mark, and Lester come if they're available. Maybe they're busy serving. So be it. They're busy serving. All right. But we do have two deacons who also minister with us here. And then I'd also like to, next, I'd like to have Brother Rick come up. And Brother Rick, if you would just stand down here in the second step. We have, uh, we're giving Rick the charge to be the overseer of the congregation here uh, next to us. And then I would like to have the, uh, the moderators come up. And stand down here in the front of the new congregation. Here comes Lester. Thank you, Lester. Just in the bottom, yeah, just stand down there. Is there. You're missing two? We have one in Africa and one in Texas. We have one moderator in Africa, that's Steve Clark. And in Texas, you have who? Philip Hodson. Philip Hodson is in Texas, okay. So we do include them here this morning as. Moderators, we've given them the charge to moderate the congregation, and Brother Ed Hansen is the lead moderator at this time. That is relatively short term, but you know we'll trust God to work that out in that way. Then I would like to also uh, call to those who are the heads of homes who are willing to uh, consecrate his service this day and the Lord into this congregation. And I'm not, we're not talking membership or necessary solid commitment to those, but to those who are willing to consecrate themselves to the heads of homes, if you would stand at this time. Those who are willing to consecrate themselves to this service and be a part of this congregation. Amen. Okay. And if you're Wives are beside you. We ask your wives to stand just to signify your support of your husbands in this great work of God. Okay? And the young people. Youth, if you're willing to consecrate yourselves to this work of God, you can also stand. Youth and children. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And uh, we're not necessarily saying membership, but, but, but for those who are willing to be a part of this, you can stand. Take part in this thing. Amen. 
And I, read, I saw here in verse 9, it says, Then the people rejoiced, for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly, willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ also rejoices with great joy when people give willingly. When people are willing to offer themselves. That's the best you can do is offer yourself for the work of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we just bow our heads for a prayer this time? A word of commendation. Hallelujah. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we prepared to build thee in house, for thine holy name cometh of thine hand, and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart, and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willingly unto them. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto them a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes. And to do all these things and to build the place, the church of God, for which you have made the provisions, Lord. And David said to all the congregation, if we could have the congregation stand, all the rest of the charity stand up to just support what we're doing here. Now bless the Lord your God, and all the congregation bless the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and worshipped the Lord and the King. And they sacrificed, sacrificed unto the Lord that day, and offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the morrow. After that day, even a thousand bullocks, and a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs with their drink offerings, and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And did eat and drink the... Before the Lord on that day with great gladness, and they made Solomon the son of David king. Father, we thank you for this example we have in your word of building the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for those who have willingly offered themselves to be a part of this new fellowship, this new congregation, Father. Thank you for these, the fathers, Lord, and the mothers in this place. Thank You for their children and the youth, Lord. We pray, Lord, that You will search their hearts and that You will make them to be perfect in heart, Lord, as they serve one another and minister one another and become a testimony of the glory of God on the face of the earth. And Father, we pray for these elders, these, these moderators, that, that, that they may go forth and stand in the power of God and the grace of God as yes, testimonies, examples to the believers. And Lord, we pray your blessing on Brother Rick oh, Jesus. as he gives direction Hallelujah. and oversight in this congregation. Hallelujah. Father, we commend them into, into your grace in the name of the Lord Jesus Praise Christ the Lord. with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Again, brothers, we commend you to the grace of God for the work of the kingdom. Go in the name of the Lord. Thank you very much. May the Lord make you to be a blessing to your neighbors, to your friends, to your families, and to the body of Christ wherever you go. So be it, Lord. Amen. I think we should just sing a song of great joy and blessing. I don't know if Brother Earl has one ready. But uh, we'd like to have some testimonies here shortly. Uh, do you have a song for the Earl? All right, why don't you come up and lead us in a song, or from your seat, stand wherever you want to be. <clears throat> Three hundred seventy-six. Song of consecration. Brother Aaron was preaching. This song came to my mind. Just want to be consecrated to him. 
and used of him. Savior who died for me, I give myself to thee. No. Savior who died for me, I give myself to thee. here. Get your hands up. We'll give some opportunity for uh, blessing one another here. Uh, we want to take time for that. So, uh, I'll have your hand over here. Somebody? I was very blessed this morning, very refreshed in um, seeking the Lord and hearing Brother Aaron's message about desiring to see God's kingdom built. Very much stirred a fresh vision and passion in my heart. I would just also request your prayers. Uh, these next several weeks for me are very full, very busy at work, and uh, I really need to uh, be able to keep my focus straight in these next several weeks. So please pray for me. Thank you. Amen. Lord bless you, Timothy. In the back. Put your hands up. Yes, a special blessing. Special thank you to Aaron and Emmanuel this morning for making this a blessing to us and uh, especially to Aaron for stirring my heart and into reminiscing on my past and the path that God has led us. I uh, had to think back to Abraham and how God had called him out of, out of uh, the land there where he was in. And then I thought of Moses and how that God called Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. And I, I just see such a parallel in my own life of, of uh, God, you know, early in my life and how God put his hand on my life. And he called me. And I was in Egypt for many years and and God called me out 
And I, even then, I, I like the children of Israel. I wandered through the wilderness for years. And when God wanted me to step over the Jordan early in my life, and uh, yet I wandered in the wilderness. And I, I do feel that I have stepped over the Jordan, and I have, I have faced the giants, and I have conquered many of them, but I feel that you know, God has brought me around again, and I am again stepping over the Jordan, and uh, God has brought me to another chapter in my life. And I just praise God for that. God is so good, so good and so wonderful, and I just thank God for his mercy toward me and toward us, and thank God for, for bringing us through valleys and taking us over the mountains and God is so good and so wonderful, and I just praise God for what he has done and what he continues to do. And I trust that, you know, as we, um, as we start out in this new congregation, that God will take us uh, over the mountains and he will allow us to conquer many of those giants that are still in our lives. And uh, we don't want those giants. We don't want to live in the land where those giants dwell. I just pray to God that we might be able to slay all those giants in the land and that we could go on and live in victory and continue to live in victory and continue to be a congregation where where those giants will continually be slain in our midst. I just thank you. I thank God and thank all of you. And just pray that you would continue, just ask all of you to continue to pray for us. It is a new venture and it is a, we want to, we want to uh, be a godly New Testament church that is transparent and open before all and that lives for Jesus and can be a testimony and be like a city set on the hillside where all can see that we've been with Jesus. So we're trusting God for our future. And thank you all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mills. Brother Earl. Well, amen. Uh, praise God. He is so good. We're overjoyed. On behalf of our little group, I just want to say a big heartfelt thank you. To Aaron and Emmanuel and Brother Rick, and this whole congregation, the charity congregation, just thank you. Uh, you will never know what it m meant to us. And uh, you've been, you entered into our lives. You cared for us. You showed love. You encouraged us. You gave us counsel. And uh, we just thank God for you. And uh, God bless you richly. And uh, we want to be faithful to the Lord. Pray for us. It's our desire to, uh, to serve God with all our heart, to be a shining light for Jesus. Thanks again. Thank you, Brother Earl. Does anyone else, anyone else get your hands up? Billy? I want to bless God today, too. Um, for his faithfulness in my life. Uh, as Brother Aaron was reminiscing there on the beginnings of charity and his coming to charity, I, I have to think back on my life, and I know he said that. It started in 82, <clears throat> and that was uh, the year after I was born. And I had to think you know, that God knew that I was going to be here this day, um, 1,600 miles away, and a little Hutterite boy going my own way, and yet God, through his power, providence and guidance has brought me to this place and I too can say that I owe my life to the charity movement, um, the tape ministry, the gospel meetings we had in, in Canada and it just changed the direction of my life and then Brother Rick taking me in as a son and totally changed the direction of my life and um, I owe my life to God and I want to serve Him. Um, with all I have, and I, I confess I have needs, 
in my life. I need a working afresh in my heart. And I just ask that you would keep us in your prayers, that we will keep Christ in the center of our life, that again we would have that change of heart, that we can look back and say, God, change the direction of our lives for the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. I just want to testify this morning that I'm not here for a socialized socialism, um, but I just want to uh, like um, uh, testify that what God is doing in my heart this morning uh, with the message. Um, I was well, for the week. I was um, just thinking over my past as well and. Um, of God and His faithfulness, and the when the older calls are usually uh, called, and how it's such a plague to me, and I just want to um, to say that the the last Sunday that the I responded there, and it was then that um, God spoke to me that by His you know I just I could tell that it wasn't that I was supposed to be there but it was the time before when when Manuel had the message um, about resentment and so um, I could just repent to the Lord again and I just want to um, rejoice for he has made me glad Amen Thank you sister we, we know you're not here just for social things you're here because you want to be here God bless you for that. I think it's good to do that. I believe that God clearly directed Israel to keep looking back, you know, to remember. And uh, Brother Ed's opening uh, brought back to my own memory a little instance that happened in the beginning of the church. We were at a, another church on a Sunday evening uh, to hear a message. We were maybe six months old. The church was maybe six months old. And under a lot of criticism, and we went to another church because we were trying to build bridges with other churches in the community. And a man, a minister, walked up to me after the service and opened up that verse that Brother Ed read about David and the, uh, all the people that were in debt and all the people that were distressed and that were discontent. And he read me those, that verse and then kind of warned me and chided me that that's what you have on your hands, brother. <clears throat> and, and then he, he walked away. But I took that verse, and I must admit I was taken back by his words at the time, and it was a bit discouraging, uh, you know, to hear that. But then I took that verse to the Lord, and as I began to pray over that verse, then the Lord reminded me that, that the man didn't finish the context of that whole story. Amen. And... And that which was meant as a discouragement became a rima to my own heart. And God spoke to me and said, that is exactly what I want to do. Hallelujah. That is the kind of people that have gathered. But this is exactly what I want to do with them. I want to make mighty men out of those in debt, discontent, distressed people. Amen. And I just want to encourage you, you new church, that it was, in, it was in that kind of poverty that we went forward. And I would just encourage you to go forward in that same kind of poverty. And I know that I haven't always been faithful in that poverty. I know that, that God has convicted me. He has showed me that I've allowed pride to rise up in my own heart and... Uh, I do acknowledge that. I have acknowledged it. I do acknowledge it again. But 
God's ways still work. And I would just encourage you to walk in that poverty and let God raise up mighty men who give glory to God. God bless you all as you go forward. Not many mighty, not many noble. Brother Rick? Yes, amen. I too uh, am thankful for being here this morning. Thankful for uh, the messages that we heard from Ed and Brother Aaron. And I can testify that over the last two or three years, particularly the last year, God has uh, worked in my heart, uh, revival several different times in my in my life and in my wife's life as well as we've talked about things. And sometimes the way has seemed foggy and dark and crooked and unbelievable. And I know some of you have gone through that in the last several and six months here as well. And I know that your heart has also, many of you have come to me and said you've experienced revival, though none of you would have chosen the means or the the path or the way that revival came, and yet, praise God, revival did come. And we can thank God for that. And I would guess, I, I would like to just maybe give you a, a blessing and a promise uh, that God has given me several times over over the past year or two. It's uh, found in the book of Isaiah in chapter 42 when uh, the nation of Israel was in trouble, things weren't going well, things looked dark, things looked crooked and foggy and God spoke through Isaiah and said to them, um, I will make the darkness light. And I will make the crooked paths straight. I will do this unto them. And then the best part is last, he said, and I will not forsake them. And so I would just give you those words from God this morning that you could be blessed by them and hold on to them. And though things may seem a little fuzzy and dark, God says, I will make the darkness light. Amen. And He can do that. Because He called light into being back at the beginning of time. And then He brought the light of the world through Jesus. And God wants to do that again in my life and in your life. And in the life of this new church. May God richly bless you. Just an opportunity to share a blessing here. Someone wants to say something. I have a hand over here in the middle. Others, get your hands up if you want to share something so we don't need to wait. Yeah, I want to thank uh, the minister here for uh, getting out of that comfort zone, Aaron, to help us. Uh, I know there are times you would have wanted to stay home in the easy chair. May God bless you and reward you for it. And uh, it was a very awkward position that we, you found yourself in, but God bless you for listening to the voice of God. And... Uh, I hope I never ever come away from the place like uh, as a verse in the Bible that says, As you have received him, so walk ye therein. We all who got saved recognize our need for Jesus Christ. And I hope I never ever come from that place that I'm a needy soul in need of him. Because once we think we are uh, unneedy, he came for the sick, for the sick. That's the one he wants to help. And... Uh, he didn't come for the self-righteous one, for the ones that are, uh, don't need a doctor. I need Jesus Christ, and he's a great physician. I need him more, probably more today than I did when I got saved. Then we're just as much. So, I now want to bless you all. I, I know I miss you all. It'll, it's kind of look like you're a big family to my heart already. So, it's about time that we get away before we get too attached to you. <laughs> We tried our best <laughs> to get you in touch. <laughs> I have a hand in the back. Uh, I want to stand up and bless the Lord because He's worthy. He's been so faithful. I uh, think back uh, over what's taken place and uh, feel sort of like the children of Israel when they were to cross the Jordan River. Things didn't part right away until they stepped in. And uh, I started to feel that like that's where we're at. The promised land is ahead of us, and I'm very happy. Yet the path behind us has not been easy. God has been faithful. I'm going to bless him. Thank you, Roger. God bless you, Annette. Roy. 
Amen. I've really been blessed this morning by the messages that were shared. Um, I just count it a real privilege to be a part of that little speck on the globe. Uh, just a very, very small part and portion of the kingdom of God and of Christ. And uh, I was uh, reading a scripture this morning and I thought about that as Brother Aaron and Brother Ed were sharing. Jesus exhorted us to... Uh, set our affection on things above, he exhorted us to lay up treasure in heaven. And he said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I ask myself, well, where is my heart? And that's a good question for us to ask. Where is my heart? And as we were worshiping here today, I, I have been so blessed. And I realized that's where my heart is. I want my treasure to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's where I desire my heart to be in Him. There is such comfort. There is such strength. There is such security in Jesus Christ. And that's where I desire to be. Amen. In Christ. Thank you, Roy. Yes, Tim. I just want to thank the Lord this morning for his faithfulness and just publicly say that he has been so good to me. As Brother Aaron was sharing, I just had to reflect on my own life and where God has brought me from. And a lot of you know the fears and the struggles with assurance that I've gone through in my younger life years. And I just thank the Lord so much for his faithfulness to me and that I know that he is alive in my life today. And I'm just so thankful. Thank you, Sister. I saw them stand up in front of a group of people and give a testimony because the Lord touches my heart and my ball and babble along and around and wonder what I even said by the time I stopped. <clears throat> but anyhow, I would like to thank all of you uh, for what you uh, have done for us the last several months and especially the ministry. And uh, especially uh, Brother Rick and Helen, their son Caleb, they've spoken into my heart for five years. God has transformed me. Seventeen years ago, I was walking as a tourist with my cut-off shorts and my Nike Air Nike shoes the streets of Holmes County with my wife and chasing the American dream. And it was a charity church member that came to me and gave me a tract and told me about God. A personal God that I never believed in. And that was the beginning of my walk. Sixteen years ago, God got my attention through the tapes from Brother Mose and Brother Denny in California. I used to listen to him in the morning while I was in the shower, turned him up real loud and let him bellow at me and I would ponder what they were saying. And one day, God just grabbed me up by the nap of the neck and jerked me up good and hard. And told me what a sinner I was, a wretch, chasing all the things that amounted to nothing. I had a beautiful home in California, $300,000, $400,000 home, a sports car, a wonderful job, pickup truck, vacations, a big diamond ring on my wife's finger. And it all was on credit cards. And I was so into debt. I had nothing. I had nothing. But I had to convince myself and my neighbors and my friends that I was a man because of all the stuff I'd collected. Well, I liquidated everything. Ended up with $5,000. I spent $3,000 moving here, bringing my child, my children. 
and had two thousand dollars to my name and started over with the Lord. Amen. God changed my desires. I, I see everything differently. I understand what matters in life. And had it not been for Brother Denny, the hippie, and Brother Mose, the ex Amish, I don't know what God would have done. But God changed my life through these men. I just am forever grateful. Thank you, Brother Ted. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you all for taking part. Brother Robert wants to say something? Yes, I, <clears throat> I don't know how to say it, but I know God's alive in each and every one of us here. And I just ask from the deepest part of my heart, I have a brother. His name is Frank. And I want him to go to heaven. And I just ask for your prayers. Not just not one day, but continue to pray until he walks through these doors. And I know God's going to bring him through these doors. But not only my brother, this whole world are our brothers and sisters. What we see externally is Satan. What we see internally is Jesus Christ. We have souls that need to know about our Lord. Look what he's doing to us, for us each day. We have to be willing to be bold for Jesus. We're all going to end up in either heaven or hell. And all of us want to go to heaven because we know the power of Jesus Christ. We have felt it, we have tasted it, and we know he's alive and we know he's real. And I just want to ask you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, you're my brothers and you're my sisters, and I'll pray for you as well as you pray for me. But we need to pray for each other. And God answers prayer, and we know that. Thank you very much for being my family. What a beautiful family we are because we're a family of Jesus. There's no other family I want to belong to than the family of Jesus Christ. And I love you dearly, and I'll pray for you daily. Thank you, and I love you. Thank you, Brother Robert. Amen. Okay, I think we'll try to close this service here.